Hello, everybody. What's going on? It's Wednesday or Thursday morning. We are going to do this talking about farmhouse kitchens and the essential ingredients that go into making the farmhouse kitchen. When I was thinking about this, my thought was there's lots of ingredients that go into different recipes. So sugar, for instance, goes into a lot of different things, but that doesn't mean that you get only one outcome. The different ingredients. Into it here tonight. Whoa, what's this? Thank you for joining. Oh. And have an exciting night. Sorry. <laughs> That's my buddy Rob. He's doing a live stream. I'm just putting it on play. Okay. So there's different ingredients <clears throat> in your uh, your uh, kitchen designs. Hey, Jackie's back. Hey, Jackie. Um, let's just start over and I'll just cut this beginning off. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the live stream. Tonight, we're talking about the 15 essential ingredients for designing or putting together a farmhouse kitchen. And I uh, grew up and my grandparents had a dairy farm. And so I'm very familiar with the farmhouse kitchen. However, what we see in the modern farmhouse is a far cry for what from what we see in the design style of the farmhouse that we see today. So farmhouse kitchens have a definite uh, uh, style look to them. And like I'm saying, you can put all these ingredients together and some of the ingredients are similar, they overlap. So there could be a specific ingredient that you can use in a modern kitchen, you can use in a you know, Scandinavian style kitchen, and you can also use in farmhouse. It's how you put the ingredients together that give you the outcome of, of what you want in terms of your design, design aesthetic. And that's what we're gonna talk about tonight with the farmhouse. Now, like I said, I grew up, my grandparents had a dairy farm and, and I would uh, be at the farm in the farmhouse kitchen, but it looked nothing like uh, what we see today. So my thought was the modern kitchen design, the modern farmhouse kitchen design is, um, and I love these, these pictures of the cows, but it's, it, they're really romanticized in my opinion, because what I remember as being a farmhouse kitchen was not spectacular. It was something very just, you know, kind of bland. Bland spruce cabinets built in place, nothing fancy. It wasn't meant to look any particular way. The, does, there was no design aesthetic to it. It was just, this is where we cook food. This is where we can food. This is where we peel apples. This is where we do the stuff to, you know, that whatever we have to do to keep things going here. So the modern farmhouse kitchen design, in my opinion, is one that is highly romanticized, but we are going to talk about it. If you want to have this type of kitchen design style, what are the ingredients that you need to put into it? So we're going to go through a list of these. I have 15 of them. Then we're going to chat about uh, some uh, functional specific stuff for a little while, and we'll jump into the chats along the way. I do want to say hi to everybody who's jumping on already, and thank you so much for being here. Uh, if you're watching this live, I really appreciate it. Make sure you give it a thumbs up so that the algorithm can be tickled somehow, and that would be great. But if you're watching this in replay, thanks so much for being here. And if you do have questions along the way, put them in the comment section down below. But in the chat, if you're watching this live, I'll try to be uh, somewhat active in the chat as we go along uh, for all of you who are watching. If you do have a specific question, put some question marks in front of it so I can see it. And um, also, there, someone will remind me and, and help me along the way, like you always do. So let's just chat about this for a little bit. And we'll talk about the uh, the kitchen ingredients for the uh, farmhouse kitchen. And uh, the first one, you know, every I think if you think farmhouse, this is definitely one thing that, you know, is just basically obvious. If if you don't get this one right off the bat, then, you know, you definitely have never seen a farmhouse kitchen before because this one is blatantly in your face what this specific uh, one is. And every kitchen needs one of these, of course. You can't have a kitchen without having one. And sometimes you have two, maybe three if you're, you know really bougie. But in the farmhouse kitchen, there is this one element that you definitely need to have to make it that farmhouse style. Now you can have other types of these, but the particular style we're talking about, of course, is the farmhouse sink. That's what really sets apart the farmhouse look. And can you have an undermount sink? Yes. Or just a top mount stainless? Sure. You can have many variety of different types of sinks, but the farmhouse sink is definitely one that falls into this category very, very well. If you want to have a successful design of a farmhouse kitchen style, then you should definitely invest 
in an apron front farmhouse sink. Doesn't have to be the white enamel fire clay type of sink. It could be something that is stainless with an apron front. It could be something like in this picture is stone that looks like maybe soapstone, which is a beautiful, beautiful material for a sink. So there's lots of options for the sink, but as long as it's the farmhouse apron front style, you'll be well on your way to, you know, getting the, the right on the right track to having a farmhouse kitchen. Now, the second one is maybe less obvious. You probably will get this one, though. And um, this particular ingredient, again, can be used in other design styles. I'll give you a hint. You have to be a little neater with this one. You have to keep things organized a little bit better. And if you're not a fan of doing that, you want things hidden away, uh, you know, then you definitely maybe want to steer away from this particular ingredient or maybe steer away from farmhouse style altogether. But uh, this definitely plays into the farmhouse look. Plus, it gives the kitchen maybe more of an open feel. And that is, of course, glass doors. Now, I also could say that open shelving, like in this picture, belongs in this style as well. The open shelf could be fit into any kitchen design style, but it really works with the farmhouse style. Um, the glass doors, especially if you're thinking of a farmhouse and if you're thinking of a farm and you're thinking of a barn and you're thinking of all the dust that comes with that, you don't maybe want all your stuff out on an open shelf. So being behind glass doors might be a better option. That's why it fits really well into the design aesthetic of a farmhouse kitchen. How are we doing? We doing good? This is this is number two. Let's keep going and we will see how well you do with these. All right. So this one is, uh, you know, by just looking at the first picture, you'd be like, it could be anything. Is it the, is it the beams? What is it? The flooring? Is it the what? What is it? Well, we know it's not the sink. We already did that one. So in this particular one, I think, I mean, this picture kind of displays it really well. Having an element of this, this has to do with material choice and the types of materials that you're putting into your kitchen. And to have a farmhouse style kitchen, this really helps to have this particular material. And it, you know, it can be brought into the kitchen in a variety of different ways. You can be quite creative with it and you can be in multiple places all at the same time. That is wooden cabinets of some sort. Doesn't have to be the whole kitchen, but certain elements of your kitchen in a farmhouse really make it look more like a farmhouse because of the rusticness. And it doesn't have to be old rustic barn boardy type of wood, but that can play into that design as well. But some type of wooden cabinet or wooden feature really works well in the farmhouse kitchen. Now, again, these ingredients, like I said, work together to you know, all of these ingredients you can put together to come up with different design aesthetics. You could do a modern kitchen like we did last week with these same things. However, it's it's the overall, when all these are put together, I think the outcome really will be the farmhouse look that we're going for. All right, let's do this next one. Now, listen, you got to get into your cabinets. It's really important. This tends to be one of the ingredients that can be simpler and it works really well. Um, you can get more ornate in traditional. Of course, when we talked about modern kitchen design style, uh, you wouldn't maybe even have any of these. But in the farmhouse kitchen, you definitely have this. You gotta get into your cabinets. You don't wanna be fumbling around, um, you know, with, with trying to, uh, you know, push doors open. You got flour all over your hand. You're just doing stuff you know, and you want to get in there. So having the simpler, this simpler item, of course, we all know what we're talking about by now, tends to be um, something that we see a lot of in farmhouse kitchens. And that is, of course, simpler hardware. Now, the simple hardware that we do see, uh, we see a lot of knobs and we see a lot of cup poles or library poles like these ones here on this cabinet and this cabinet. So I think that if you want to go for that look, this this will really get you there. If you have long, you know, modern handles, super long, or just you know something that's even more ornate, it doesn't it doesn't really play into it. Although the you know farmhouse kitchen can look 
busy, maybe in my opinion. Sometimes it can be a lot to look at. There's a lot going on design wise. Having simpler hardware really helps play into that. Just, just kind of bring it down to okay, this remember, this is we're trying to mimic a farmhouse here. And I don't know about you, but like generally speaking, farmhouses weren't, at least what I remember super ornate you know it really had a lot to do with function as the kitchen should and so having simpler hardware definitely plays into this this trend this design uh, aesthetic if you're jumping on i see the thumbs up coming in so make sure that you you hit the thumbs up i really appreciate it thanks so much and hey let's just stop for a quick second as we do this and just say hi to everyone here i see uh i see all your names and if you have a question uh, please throw it in, but um, da, 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 let's see. <laughs> also, that's one skinny bull. Yeah, that's what AI generates for you when you trust it. <laughs> not a fan of this type. Well, I know I'm not personally a fan. I don't hate it, though. I think it looks pretty cool. Helen, hey, what's up? I have a 150-year-old farmhouse on actual in an actual farm uh, in Nova Scotia. Oh, where at? This style is pretty standard for our homes. Yeah, the farmhouse I remember was just very, very basic. Helen, tell me where you're at. Where are you in Nova Scotia? I saw some good beadboard kitchen cabinets in an old house in Peterborough. My go-to for farmhouse or rustic inspirations is Country Living. They have good books on kitchens. Yeah, there's lots of inspiration out there that you can find. Um, you know, how is it that you're supposed to... Um, Port Maitland. Where is that? Is that on the mainland? Must be. Cool. I'll have to look at look at that up. But yeah, there's lots of things out there uh, to look at to give us inspiration, and this next one will be one of them as well. So, a true farmhouse kitchen is used for prepping food, maybe canning food. I remember, you know. My grandfather peeling a lot of apples. Um, I remember that. I remember, um, you know, just the pies being made and all this stuff. So, and 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 my grandparents' kitchen didn't didn't have this, but it seems to be a real staple feature in this modernized farmhouse kitchen that we that we see. And it and it could be in many farmhouse kitchens, and it works in a lot of kitchens. It's great for food prep. It's food safe. It's great for cutting on. It's good for your knives. Chefs love it and usually have one in their kitchen. Of course, it also plays into the wooden trend uh, that goes along with that. And this is the wooden countertops. These can usually be butcher blocks, some type of hardwood, maple or walnut or something like that to give it some you know, real durability. You don't want something that has a coating on it that can scratch. You want something that you can use. That's, I think, really what the farmhouse essence is, is a kitchen that you can use and, and get in there and get your hands dirty and wooden countertops really help uh, with, with this for sure. All right, now, this is a, an, an interesting kitchen. I mean, this this is uh, beautiful. I just wanna point out something here. This looks like marble inlay into this island, which uh, marble is great for baking. And so that, that's, re that's really cool. And that's something you see a lot of, uh, but a really pretty kitchen, looks nice looking at it. And this next ingredient really has to do with the overall look of the whole space. You're not looking at one particular thing or item, kind of looking at the whole thing in general has to do with, you know, what, what colors you're using? Well, what what is the the color that you're using? The color palette that goes along with a modern or old country style farmhouse, and a lot of the times, what you'll find you see white, you'll just see neutral colors. Now, this does not mean that you can't have a farmhouse kitchen that is blue or you know maybe green, but generally speaking, you don't see a lot of farmhouse kitchens that are fire engine red. Now, of course, you know. I'm sure if you type in fire engine red farmhouse sinks in Google images, you'll find a whole bunch of them. But overall, usually that's not one of the, you know, ingredients that really go into the mix. That being said, if you do keep your your colors a little more neutral, you know, whites, beige, grayish, and, you know, even what, wood tones, of course, what I say, I said gray. Uh, those are ones that, uh, that really 
you know, speak to this design style. Now, you know, we all have our opinions on what we like, what we don't like, but you see a lot of white farmhouse kitchens, which to me is kind of interesting because wouldn't, wouldn't that be the opposite of what you want in a farmhouse? I don't know. I don't live on a farm now, so I'm not really sure. <laughs> Betty, I'm liking these kitchens more than the million dollar ones from last time. Yeah. Those million dollar kitchens were crazy. If you didn't see that video, go check it out um, sometime. And, uh, you know, I think these are million dollar kitchens, but who knows? It's probably like $10 million homes these are all taken from. All right, so white neutral, you know, just keeps a bright and open atmosphere, I guess, keeps everything really light, and, and that's a great feature in a kitchen. You generally don't see a farmhouse in black uh cabinets you, you don't you don't normally see blue colors you don't see a lot of even black accents necessarily maybe in the in the hardware but just a lot of wood a lot of neutral colors really would get you far when you're trying to you know design a farmhouse all right let's keep doing this and again remember i said at the start this is like the romanticized version of what the farmhouse is in my opinion um it, it's like what we think the farmhouse kitchen should look like. But in reality, it's probably, you know, more of just a design style and less of actually, these are probably not farm homes. So though they could be, I'm just saying. So this one here, I think that this one is one that really plays into the farmhouse style more than any other design style that we could examine. I think that this one, um, this is really what a farmhouse kitchen is all about, in my opinion. More so than the farmhouse sink, more so than all the other elements, this particular element is, is key, definitely key. You can see it here as well, and um, you know, there's lots going on in these pictures, and a lot of overlap in all of these pictures, like the modern kitchens we did last time. But we can see it again here. I think the farmhouse kitchen, you know, originally we think farmhouse, you think just, you know, big family, everybody sitting down, everyone's got to get fed. And that's the farmhouse table is really plays into the farmhouse. I think it's the, the, the truest representation, the truest ingredient, the most authentic ingredient in the farmhouse kitchen is having a big farmhouse table. Does that mean other design styles can't have tables? No, but the farmhouse one, it really makes sense. When you think about the farmhouse and just what's happening at that table, the farmhouse table is, is you know, I just remember of all the things in my grandparents' kitchen wasn't very fancy, but there was a great big table in there. And other kitchens, you know, had tables too, but just the size of that table and, you know, its purpose, this really was, um, was the ingredient that I think needs to be there for sure. All right, let's keep going. Now, let's see here. This one's fairly obvious. And again, th this can be in many design styles, as all of these can. I'm not even sure why this makes sense. It has maybe to do with more of a barn feature. So I guess it plays into the country vibe. I'm not sure if originally farmhouse kitchens would have had this or not, but it definitely gives you that look. And, um, you just got to look up to find this one if you really want to see it. You see it here very well. Of course, it's not the pendants, but it is the exposed beams. Rustic exposed beams just play into this design style. It borrows from, like I said, the barn outside, and it just brings in that element of rustic into the kitchen and uh, really sets it apart as a farmhouse style. You can have beams in other kitchens, but really belongs here. This and the table, the table especially, the table is like no doubt it's a farmhouse if you have a table. And there's another ingredient we'll talk about that these two things blend together to, to really set the farmhouse kitchen apart, in my opinion. But the exposed beam is definitely something that you'd want to think about. All right, let's go. Okay, this... <laughs> This is a design feature, not necessarily that has anything to do with the kitchen, um, but I, I don't even know if it belongs on the list or not, but I'm, I'm putting it on the list because I think 
If this belongs anywhere, it belongs in a farmhouse kitchen. Um, and it's almost like, it's almost too easy, this particular one. It, it's like, it you know, why we put it in, I'm not sure where, why we decided to put it in there. I, I don't even know. But obviously it's borrowed from the barn and how you're getting into the barn. Um, I don't remember it ever being this fancy, but yeah, the barn door. The barn door design features. It, if it belongs anywhere, it belongs in the farmhouse kitchen. Now, say what you want about the barn door. I, I, you know, people <laughs> have commented on my videos where there's the barn door behind me, and I'm talking about trends, and they're like, "Listen to this guy with the barn door behind him. Like he can't. He, what he he's got no business talking about trends with that barn door." <laughs> it's like, people, man, just chill out. I like the barn door. Okay, it has nothing to do with the farmhouse aesthetic. I just think it looks cool. But, oh, man, the heat you get from having a barn door. But if it belongs anywhere, my goodness, it belongs in a farmhouse-style kitchen. I mean, if it if if you're, you know, saying anything about it in this, in this farmhouse kitchen here, it's like, you know, what are you talking about? Of course it belongs there. It's the barn door. We had an extra one out at the barn, and we brought it in and put it in our kitchen. So enough of that one. <laughs> It's more of a decorative element, of course, but it's functional as well. You gotta, you want, you need a door, so why not put in the barn door? All right. Now, again, this one, this one's iffy, but you do see it a lot in the moderny farmhouse style. Um, you know, this one is definitely something that costs quite a bit of quid. Um, doesn't need to be in a farmhouse kitchen, but for some reason, when you look at these pictures, you can you can see this element. This is a blue, you know, obviously it's blue. You can see it too, right? Um, but yeah, so the neutral color palettes, but you, you can go off of that a little bit. But anyway, this particular feature is, um, you know, a high a higher end feature, much, much higher of an end feature than, um, you know, probably a, a farmhouse would actually have. Back in the day, but we're talking about modern farmhouses. It doesn't have to be modern style, but just more modern. And of course, this one has it too. It's not the hood, but it is what is under the hood. And that's an apron front range, uh, the range where you can see the controls that sits on top. It's like a you know a, a top mounted range where you have the controls, and um, that is indicative of this farmhouse look. Really. Again, not more maybe more modern farmhouse, not something that we see in every farmhouse style. But hey, this one has like the barn door feature too. You know, this has a lot of the features. All of these designs show a lot of um, of these. So there you go, apron front range. All right. Let's go. Next one. This one will be less obvious. Less obvious. Take a quick look. Um, this is nothing to do with function, but uh, it definitely has to do with, with the look of what makes a farmhouse kitchen. Wow. It's like, oh, hello, hello. A lot of it happening here. There's a lot of this happening here. How about this one? Check it out. Hope Rule says no picture, only audio. What's happening? Anyone else got that problem? I don't know. The, <laughs> the unremitting clutter. No, must be just you, Hope, for some reason. I don't know. Everyone else can see. Okay. Um, and I can see it too. Yeah, the uh, the unremitting clutter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those those cluttered kitchen. Okay, one maybe you want to scratch. So I you know, it's not the clutter, but it can lead to clutter for sure. And we're talking about vintage decor. 
there's usually some kind of older looking piece of furniture or thing, whether it's scales or mugs or bowls or I mean, this one has a whole, you know, whole kitchen full of it. This one has a whole kitchen full of it. Just elements that let you know we're going farmhouse here, people. Like I don't want you to be mistaken. This is a farmhouse kitchen. So if you couldn't tell by the farmhouse sink and you couldn't tell by the beams and you couldn't tell by the butcher block, hopefully you can tell by the fact that I have this old dresser that I grabbed from upstairs and repurposed because I want you to know that this is farmhouse. And I think this plays into the farmhouse very, very good. Helen's OCD is on overdrive. Woo, there's so much happening. Imagine cleaning all this. Anyway, the point is this is really... Uh, speaks to the farmhouse well. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to have these items. You can hopefully have a very clean and, you know, functional type of kitchen without that. But having some type of vintage element, I think, is nice and can really look, you know, good in a farmhouse kitchen and really play to that very, very well. So let's, let's go on to this next one. Uh, do you like my slides? My slides are just killing it tonight. All right. All right. This, okay, I love this one here. This one and the farmhouse table, to me, this really is what makes a farmhouse kitchen. Now, this has to do with layout, and it has to do with, it, this really goes against the grain as well, and you might maybe argue with me on this one, but I'll explain why I mean what I mean when I say it here. Um... Again, we have the table here. We've seen this one before. We have the table here. Um, you know, very, very nice. Oh, no, this is the wrong slide. Okay, never mind. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is for the next one. Uh, okay, let's go back. Okay, this has to do, yeah, well, I mean, hey, it shows that, look at the brick. You can see the brick here. You can see the wood elements. You can see this, it looks like faux brick, but you can see that element to it. It has to do with natural materials bringing in natural outside materials or i know you know bricks maybe not supernatural it's you know you have to make bricks but the idea is that that element of outdoors rustic especially with wood especially with with you know weaved baskets some type of natural element in the kitchen of course is an ingredient that you want to have for you know a very design orientated romanticized farmhouse kitchen have something natural on the go and this can be just you know a bowl of cucumbers <laughs> i think that would be the most natural for a farmhouse kitchen just a bowl of cucumbers there's if there's anything screams farmhouse it's a cucumber you know what i'm saying i mean that's my opinion anyways okay this is the one i'm talking about so this one here with the farmhouse table really go together um and it's not something we see a lot of. It's not something that's pushed. It's not something that even I talk about a lot of because I like maybe the opposite to what this is. And uh, you can see it here as well. And it is the semi-open layout. So what I mean by that is, yes, you can have a very big, um, you know, open farmhouse kitchen. But generally speaking, the farmhouse had a closed in kitchen it usually wasn't the open concept because of you know the history of the farmhouse maybe it, that just wasn't a thing and so i know that when you're looking at some of these kitchens they're big they're open but but this is like semi-open it's it's a closed kitchen as the, the table would fit really well inside of this um same with this one it's a little more open but again the seating's inside it's it's not fully open this one here again is is closed in more galley style with the island, but you know, seating in the back. But I just think when you think, and hey, even go back to this one, this one really speaks of it, actually. You know, here's this the kitchen. It's it's semi-open. It might be open to another place, but the, the kitchen and the seating, it's all within that one spot. And I, I think that really plays in well with what it means to have um, you know, a, a farmhouse style kitchen. And let me just flop through here. And again, you know, you see all the elements that we've been talking about tonight already. And, and this one with the farmhouse table, I think that, that really glues it together. When I see that, I'm like, okay, this is definitely a real farmhouse kitchen in terms of functionality and what its purpose is for. So I really appreciate that one. The semi-open layout. 
or or it could even be a closed layout but i say semi-open because it it just has space it has you know room to move it's not cramped but it's not uh com, you know not completely you know in a separate room it's not completely open either to everything else in the home yeah and <laughs> these semi-open kitchens are enormous and yeah and that's uh, again you know i mean most of these kitchens we see they are enormous and that that's that kind of most of us don't have enormous kitchens. I know I don't. So that being said, though, um, the idea is there that this is, you know, three walls at least. It's it's contained in this space. Semi-open. All right, let's do this one. This one might not. Yeah. This one here is, um, I mean, every kitchen, you got to be able to see and... I don't even know if this, I think this is country, okay? You know, I could be off on this particular one, but this really plays into the country style, I think. And, and you know, all these kitchens haven't, and I, and I don't know if older farmhouses actually had this. It, it could be borrowed from an outside element again. Um, you can see them again here. That's just the country lighting. But more specifically, sconces for some reason are you know something we see a lot of in the farmhouse style they can go in any style kitchen again but again like these ingredients together all come together to, to form what we you know visually see as the farmhouse and so when we look through these again now we can look at them a little better and pick them out these elements um play into that very nicely and just gives it a particular look that says hey we're trying to do farmhouse here so let's throw some sconces on the wall. You could leave it out and it just just be as farmhousey as any other kitchen, but uh, I think it really works. Right, right. Okay, <laughs> okay. La a couple more. A couple more. No, this is the last one. This is the last one. This is ingredient fifteen, and we'll talk about some other things here. Uh, I do have one honorable mention. So I guess that's ingredient 16, but I wanted to do an honorable mention. Oh, there I go. There we go. And again, this is not something that is strictly a farmhouse feature, but certainly helps in a farmhouse when you have bulks of things um, that you need to store. Now, I don't know how much Pellegrino you're storing in your farmhouse kitchen, but, hey, you know, farmers drink Pellegrino. Um, and here we have it again. It's pantry storage, generally walk-in pantry, but you need to have some place to store food. And, you know, this this is uh, something that a lot of country kitchens would have, farmhouse kitchens would have, but this, this is one that can go anywhere, of course. But I guess it does have to do more with just maybe the styling of the door, maybe a more rustic door, you know, the styling of inside the pantry, um, just the overall look. But having this in your farmhouse kitchen, not it doesn't make it a farmhouse kitchen, but it absolutely adds to the function of that space. And function is very, very important. doesn't matter if you have modern, traditional, contemporary, japan -D, Canadian Andy, whatever it is, you need to have a functioning space. That is very important. So remember that for sure. All right. Now, the honorable mention, of course, which we've seen in a lot of this, somebody already mentioned it. And uh, yes, you got it. The honorable mention is shiplap. And, uh, you know, maybe actually it shouldn't have, it's just maybe not even should be an honorable mention. Maybe it belongs there more than some of these other ingredients because I think shiplap absolutely is an essential ingredient if you want to have a farmhouse kitchen. I mean, you know, Joanna Gaines, you know, invented shiplap, right? Didn't she? Didn't she invent shiplap? <laughs> anyway, it's just, it's something that you see a lot of in, in those kitchens. So there you go. Canadian Andy, right? That's my new design style. I just made it up tonight. I just made up my own design style. This is incredible right here live on this on this live stream, Canadian Andy. I'll have to come up with something uh, to go with that. Next week, we'll break down the Canadian Andy lives, uh, the Canadian Andy kitchen design live. Uh, we'll see how that goes. 
And Helen has the ship up on the ceiling. That's very cool. So that is, in essence, what it means to have a farmhouse kitchen. You put all those things together and you will have the look that you're going for if that's the look you're going for. And like I said, no matter what the design style is, if it's not functional, then you are going to run into problems. So that's why I'm directing you to unlock the kitchen of your dreams with a personal one-on-one -on -one consultation. There's a link in the description below if you want to chat with me one-on-one. -on -one. We can brainstorm your kitchen. We can go through design options. And you can get a second set of eyes on your plan if you're designing new kitchen, if it's renovation, a new build. It's really helpful to get some other insight into that space. So you can check it out. There's a link in the description below. And I'll leave you with that. Now, what I want to do next is go into talking about some functional storage. So this is, uh, you know, depending on, doesn't matter what, what design style you have. Let's just dive into some storage. Now, last week we talked about four corners. If you didn't check that out, it's in the modern kitchen design puzzle. It was a live stream we did from last week. And at the uh, end of that, we talked about just four corners of function, basically a way of, you know, play on words with the, the puzzle idea that I was going with last week. This week, I want to break down one of those pieces of that pie, one of those ingredients of functionality, and that is uh, storage. So storage is a very essential part, especially when we're talking about a farmhouse kitchen. If any kitchen needs a lot of storage, if you're living on a farm, that would probably be one of the places that you would want to have more storage. When I looked at the million dollar kitchens on Saturday's video, one of the comments that came up was these people, you know, if it's a really high end kitchen, these people probably don't even uh, use this kitchen. It's probably just for show, although most of the kitchens I looked at were just horrible. But the, you know, these real high end kitchens, these modern, super modernized kitchens probably are not, uh, you know, doing a lot of cooking in them and they're more for show. But the farmhouse kitchen, hopefully in essence, um, is something that you're using. So it needs to be functional and storage is a major, major part of that. So I want to share with you um, just basically eight, you know, ways, I guess, that we can think about storage in a farmhouse, in a modern kitchen, in any type of kitchen that you have. If you're planning on designing a kitchen, these are some things you can think about. And um, I talked about all of these before, but I just want to put them all together as kind of one like one blanket for you just to to look at here. So number one is drawer divider. So we're talking about storage and along with storage comes organization. If you want to have a functional kitchen where things are stored properly, organizing them is very important. And so having functionality inside the drawers is important as well. This is something that's super inexpensive that you can buy aftermarket. They don't have to come custom with your cabinets. You can get these anywhere. Lots, Dollarama, dollar stores, you know, 99 cent stores have these types of things that are expandable. You can put them in and just kind of create places inside your drawers that, you know, make sense for storing things and organizing that kitchen. So decluttering, organizing storage, all key factors in, in this. I think it's important that you address what's inside the drawers, not only the outside look of the kitchen. If what's happening on the inside as well, all we see is the outside and, you know, this particular kitchen looks beautiful. But when you open the drawer, is it a mess? Can you get at the things you need to get at so that your kitchen is usable, functional for you, the user? So drawer dividers definitely play into that and are a good, great idea. Next one is corner solutions. You all know I love my corner cabinets. And if you're going to have a corner cabinet, you better have something in there that can help you organize the thing and store things. Because the last thing you want to do is be on your hands and knees digging around in a corner. So have something in there. Spend the extra bit of money so that you can at least get at the things that are in that deep, dark hole of a cabinet that's in your corner. <laughs> can you... Can you decipher the disdain in my voice when I'm talking about corner solutions. It is important. Make sure you have something to organize your corners so they don't become a cluttered mess that you absolutely hate because you will absolutely hate it. But if you have something that works for you, then that's very, very important. So make sure that you you do that. If it's a blind corner, get something in there. If it's if it has to be a lazy Susan, it has to be. But make sure you do address the corner so your kitchen can be more functionally storage enabled. Making up words as I go or 
putting together words that don't belong, but that is very, very important. All right, vertical storage. We talk about this lots, but you know, if you need more space, you can always go up, generally speaking, if you have the height. Um, and a lot of kitchens these days have nine foot ceilings and 10 foot ceilings, but even on an eight foot ceiling, you can, you know, reclaim some of that height where a regular 30 inch high wall cabinet would have been. You can go with, you know, a 39 inch wall cabinet and just get some more height. Now, when you go vertical, you run into the risk of not being able to reach those things. And so that's something to consider. But if it comes down to not having enough storage for the things I need, and I actually do need them, and they're not clutter, and they're not things I need to give away, I do need to put them somewhere, then going vertical can be a good option to think about. And I'll put a little, you know, dot to that, point two, uh, vertical storage 2.0 could be, you know, pull down units and things of that nature. So that although it is high, you can pull it down to you. And so vertical storage allows you to do that when you're um, planning out functionality. The next one is this, toe kick drawers. You know, I mean, the space is there. You have four and a half inches that you can deal with. That is basically the height of a cutlery drawer. So you can think of, hey, there's lots of things that I can put in the, you know, toe kick space. Now, reminder, it's on the floor. You know, you probably got to push to open with your foot. So there's some issues with it. It's not for everyone, but it is space. A lot of times people in their kitchens, we'll get to the next four in a second. I've run into this a lot with clients. Um, and they're just, they want to reclaim or use every bit of space. And I totally get that. You don't want to waste any space in the kitchen. And so if that is your prerogative and, and that's sort of what you're thinking of, then the tokic space can be very valuable to you potentially. Again, not something for everyone. If you don't want to be bending down in there, you know, then obviously don't go that route. But think about that. If, if you need to, it's extra space. In fact, when it comes down to it, like if you have a narrow space, you can get fillers that you can, you know, basically if you even have six inches, you could put a door on that. It can open. You can put trays in. Um, but you might only have one of those areas in the kitchen where in underneath your cabinet, you have lots of space. You can put it wherever you want. You don't have to have all toe kick drawers, but you can have some or one or two. And so that's something to uh, to consider. It can be something that's done after the fact, uh, not super hard to install. You can buy kits online You can get them on Amazon um, that, you know, you buy, put together, install, away you go. So toe kick drawers. So we have drawer dividers, corner solutions, vertical storage, toe kick drawers. Number five is the most obvious, the one that should be in every cabinet, if it's not drawers or other specific use cabinet, is pullouts. If it's a pantry, have pullouts. If it's a base cabinet, for sure, that's not drawers or, you know, some kind of appliance lift. Make sure you put the pullouts in there. Full extension rails that have good weight testing so they can hold a lot of stuff, a lot of cans, a lot of heavy items. Having pullouts not only helps you to store things but having the full extension allows you to see it's everything that's in there so the stuff doesn't get lost in the back of that pantry and then purchased again because you're at the store and you're like, ah, do I have beans? Probably not, but you have like eight cans in the back of your pantry. And so it's like, oh, I had beans already. Well, I'll just put another one in there. Uh, pullouts are very essential, I think, for organizing and for storage and keeping everything, you know. I, did, I mean, I guess you can have as many. Beans don't go bad, so I mean, go for it. But maybe... You just, you know, maybe you don't have space for that many cans of beans. I think you know what I'm saying. Let's go to the next one. Pegboards. That's a cool one. And you see sometimes, especially in farmhouse kitchens, this can be something that we see a lot of sometimes. But having pegboards, especially in a smaller space, uh, can really work. This is more functional. Now, I'm not talking about pegboards for, you know, look or decor. I'm talking about purely function. Like, I have this wall that I, I can't really fit a cabinet on but I, I need space for hanging something. A pegboard can really work. You can buy these at Ikea. I have one. Uh, it's not in my kitchen. It's in my mud room. 
um, put them in the kids room. They're great for just hanging things and putting whatever on. We, you know, you put your, we put our keys on whatever it is, but it can be a spot for hanging utensils and, and cutlery and different things of that nature. And so it can really help you store things that you want to quickly grab. You don't mind seeing, uh, you can, it can add an element of decor to the space because of what it is. It automatically almost is because it's hanging on a wall. Um, but it can, it can really be a, a powerful tool for storage. The appliance garage, definitely something that helps. Now, you know, th there's a, a balance with the appliance garage because you have counter space and you have storage and you want to balance those things out. Counter, you know, tops are going to be taken up by appliance garages. However, it can be a place to hide appliances. And um, my suggestion for appliance garage is it not have a floor, like a bottom. It comes straight down, but its countertop is the floor. So things can slide in and out easier. And it can be a little more functional that way than having, you know, the lip of, a, of the bottom of the cabinet that you got to come down over. Uh, that can be a problem. So make sure that if you do have an appliance garage, my recommendation is that it just comes right down uh, onto the top and not no base to it. Um, but yeah, it can be a great way to store things out of the way that you don't want seen. Cause one of the requests I get a lot of is I just want, want I want my kitchen to look uncluttered. Uh, as we've seen from some of these pictures, it can look very cluttered, even in a, in a, something that's, that's, you know, made to look that way. Like it's, it, it, it's, it's decorated in such a way, it's curated in such a way, um, to look like farmhousey, but a lot of people just, we want uncluttered kitchens. We want it, we want it simple. We want a place to put things, and the appliance garage can be a great way to do that. You can have timbre doors, you can have vertical lift doors, bifold doors, open up doors, you can have sliding doors, lots of options for doors. And so there's lots of options to make it look however you want it to look, which is a great feature. So the appliance garage is a really great way to do that. And uh, last but not least, of course, and there's other ways uh, um, that we can apply storage but is a, a pot rack and um you know this would be one of the ones that would be borderline i don't want to be dusting things but pot racks you'll notice are in commercial kitchens for a reason because you just want to get at the thing quickly and you know commercial kitchens i know you don't have a commercial kitchen in your home but when when you think about i want to grab something easily it's right there um my drawers are not taken up by these large pots, so they can be used for other things. So it can really work even in a smaller kitchen. It can also be part of the design. If you like the look of pot racks, then that that helps. You know, if you think they don't look good, uh, then that's no good. But, you know, hanging your pots there, it's, it, you know, over an island or on a wall or on a pegboard can be something that you can utilize to uh, just, you know, allow yourself to have more functional storage in your kitchen um, and, and pots, like I said, take up a, a big chunk of space. And so you want to be able to store those well. And if you have a kitchen that's not renovated yet and you don't have enough drawer space and your pots are, you know, in a, you know, an old corner base with nothing to help you if, or if in the base cabinet that just has shelving and they're hard to get at, transferring those to a pot rack might be a good solution if you have the room for such a thing. So I think that um applying these four items you know you can even if you take one of these in your kitchen whether it's a new kitchen or your kitchen now as it is saying how can i add some of this stuff to make my kitchen more functional or just think through functionality of storage in your kitchen so that you can come up with solutions oftentimes there's no one size fits all for storage in your kitchen every uh, kitchen is different. Yes, they all have the same elements, but the spaces are different and how you use them are different. And the things that you have are different. You might have more pots or you might have a kosher kitchen and you have double of things, or you could have a smaller space or a bigger family or smaller family. Like there's so many elements involved. So you can't just say, well, here's the rules for storage it comes down to what it is that you actually need to store and uh, these things will definitely help you get some of the way there. If I was going to pick any one of these as being like the number one thing that I would suggest for any kitchen uh, that you can do relatively easy uh, would be definitely pullouts. Adding pullouts to an you know to your kitchen that's already existing is not that challenging to do, uh, but definitely adds 
an element of function to your kitchen that you will appreciate uh, once you put them in. Buy for, you will appreciate them hands down. And a lot of you probably have kitchens where you have a space that's difficult to access and you wish there was a better way to do it. You can probably add pullouts fairly easily, whether they're framed cabinets or frameless cabinets. So whether they have a face frame or they have, you know, the European, you know, frameless style, there are ways to do this that are very DIY friendly. And, uh, you know, you'll probably spend a little bit of money on them to get good hardware. But it, I think it's a really good investment into your kitchen to make it more functional. So I think that is the last one. So that's that's the last of those slides. I hope that was valuable to you. I know that if you're designing a kitchen, not everyone likes farmhouse. And last week we did modern. Not everyone likes modern. But like I said, next time around, maybe we'll do Canadian Andy or some other design style. You know, let me know in the comments or in the chat. If there's a particular style you'd like me to talk about, and I'd love to talk about those, uh, because it's interesting, you know, even if you don't like the particular style, you can look at it and see elements um, in all these styles that that one can be, you know, crossed over into other design styles, or you can see things you're like, hey, I, that look, that I like that look. I think that would work in my kitchen. And so I think it's important that we, you know, you explore all the different styles, whether you like them or not, to see what are some of the elements that we can transfer over. You know, I, one style that I really like, I love the the, the more modern, um, you know, uh, minimalistic look of like a Japandi. It's not my particular style that I, I want in my home, but I like looking at that style because it, it comes up with interesting ideas for me. And uh, I think that's really important, especially as a designer. If you're a designer, if you're a kitchen designer, um, you know, you can get stuck in just what you know and what you do. And it's important to kind of look outside, you know, for a little bit. I know when I was designing kitchens, I still design kitchens for a living. But when I was doing it in a you know brick and mortar store and, you know, just you know designing kitchen after kitchen after kitchen, it was challenging. I didn't I didn't want to look at other I didn't want to look around and, and get inspiration I should have been but I didn't and so it led to just what it led to was just kind of cookie cutter kitchens which is fine but there's no excitement in it and it could be much better and so I encourage if you were in the design business you know look around a little bit and see what um, you know you can find out there look at simple pictures or or explore some of these design elements a little deeper to give you some ideas as well um, so that's, that's kind of my take on that. <laughs> I was waiting for ceramic cows and roosters in the presentation. Sink aprons, grease can, so disappointing. So, well, Jackie, you know, I can't, I, I didn't think of the cows and roosters. I'm sorry, but you're right. They should have been in there, especially, um, you know, the, the salt and pepper shakers. What a real rooster do yes a real rooster would do aging in place universal design would be interesting yeah i get this a lot actually aging in place universal design people are asking about so um that's something i'm thinking about I, I know we chatted about before i think we did it did i do it for a live stream i have a video talking about basically for boomers um you know baby boomers and kitchen so there is a video that i talked about this um Uh, extensively in a previous video and i think it had i think it had i don't forget the name of it but it had something to do with boomers but yeah we can revisit that again um your question jackie let me see if i can find it um uh oh here we go this is it here we're finishing the install of our kitchen right now and had some rough news the countertop we had chosen caesar stone okay would require three seams I thought on Sile Stone Ocean Jasper. Well, gonna have to have a look. Uh, bear with me. Let's just have a look here. Let me bring up a picture of it. Sile Stone, and we'll have everyone take a look. Ocean Jasper. Okay. All right. Let me just uh, share the screen here, folks. We'll have a look at Ocean Jasper. Um, 
see what we think. And it's that one. Here we go. So this is Ocean Jasper. Everyone see that? Okay. So you need three seams. I got to look up Georgian Bluff. Um, so, so we can compare. Let's just compare. Bear with us, everyone, as we check this out. So that's Ocean Jasper. Let's do Georgian Bluff. Caesar Stone. I'm a horrible typer. Uh, G Gregorian? Oh, no, Georgian. Okay. <laughs> Georgian Bluffs. All right, so I guess my question is, I'll, I'll shoot this back to you. Are they telling you, okay, let me share this screen now. Oh, so here's uh, Georgian Bluffs, and that's Ocean Jasper. Okay, everyone, you're all watching. If you're watching this, I'll help Jackie out. The question I have, Jackie, is um, <laughs> okay, my opinion. Okay, so you have to have three seams, but you'd have to have three seams with either of these colors. Um, and so I'm trying to figure out what it is about Georgian Bluffs. Is it because of the veining? Personally, I'll just give you my opinion. I like the, the Caesar Stone one better. Um, that, super, like, no reason other than personal. This one here, it's very nice counter up too. I just like the one that has a little slightly more veining. So uh, if that makes any sense. Um, unless they're telling you that for some reason the Sile Stone needs less seams, then maybe I'd go with the Sile Stone. But if it, if it, if it's... Oh, it's for an island. Okay, we need a jumbo. Okay, so if you have to get the jumbo, if it means having a seam in the island, go with the top that doesn't allow for any seams. So then if that's the case, yeah, I would probably go with the uh, the Ocean Jasper um, if that's the case, if you need to get a jumbo slab. And because the last thing you want is a seam in your island. And if you have to have any seam in your island that's not good but um yeah jackie i think i hope that helps a little bit my that's my opinion if i just had to choose between you know two counter ups that I, I both liked but one had a seam in an island one didn't then i would definitely go with the one that didn't um for an island i hope that helps um if you make your decision but that's just my take on it as far as the colors go i, I like the the caesar stone one a little better just because i you know, for no reason other than I just like it better. Tony, what's up, man? Uh, good to see you. Thank you. Uh, what paint colors are you recommending to your clients nowadays? And what sheen do you prefer? I prefer, I just prefer eggshell as the sheen, um, you know, satin eggshell. And I just have always just like that more satiny, um, you know, I guess it's, 30% sheen, if, if that makes sense, but the eggshell sheen, you know, colors, I mean, I'm really, I'm really liking a color called Rhinestone Strauss by Sherwin-Williams. Um, that's one of my favorites. I don't necessarily make color recommendations for clients because I am not an, an interior designer, and so I, I don't want to give an opinion and then think that I'm, I know more than I you know, than I actually do, or I don't want to let on that I know more about interior design and what goes with what, but that color I really do love. And uh, I only love it because my wife really loves it. And so if she loves it and she really knows color better than I do, then it must be really good color. <laughs> I can't even tell if it's warm or hot or neutral. What are you talking about? Warm or cold? It's cool or warm or neutral. Like, what are you talking about? I don't even know that much. So, um, so yeah, but sheen I can talk about because I do love that and um, that eggshell sheen and uh, I do like that color. And there's another color I like called Repose Gray, 
sort of, sort of, sort of has that grayy tone to it uh, or beigey tone. And that's really nice too. That's a Sherwin Williams color as well. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't recommend colors uh, per se. All right. Awesome. You're very, very welcome. Michael, man, what's going on? Renault's going really good. Everybody, thanks, Mike, for bringing this up. I'll just tell you, I should have my cabinet doors this week, which means very soon we'll be putting out a video of uh, the kitchen being installed, the doors going on, kind of the finished project. The renovation of the Airbnb that we are that we purchased and are renovating is going really, really well. Um, things are really moving along. It's looking incredible. Um, you know, really, basically, thanks to my dad, who's there every single day working his butt off, um, and you know, allowing me to do all the other stuff that I'm doing here in my business. So if it wasn't for that, it'd be going nowhere. We'd have to just basically sell the thing because it would just be a, a, a money, a money uh, pit. But um, so big thanks to him for, for doing all that work and it is looking fantabulous. So can't wait to show you all it's coming along really good. And we'll, we'll talk about it more as time goes on. Um, all right. What is your opinion on the best poles to use in the kitchen? Uh, in terms of size, okay, I don't like knobs. I'm just not a fan. I like, and 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 I've said this um, other other shows before. I like uh, 96 mil length, and I like 120 mil length. Those are really good sizes for me personally. Easy to grab if you are, you know, we talked about aging in place. Uh, you know, super easy. Three inch can be a little small, um, but but 96 mil, which is about three and three quarter inches or 120 mil, which I, I don't know what inches that is. Um, that to me are, are good. And the other reason I like that size is because it's easily replaceable later on down the road. So you, you'll find tons of options for 96 mil, 120 mil in, in pulls where if you go something super long, if you go to replace that, um, you probably have a more difficult time in the future. And then you're stuck with doors that are drilled for that so that that's kind of my go-to i also i sort of i like the hidden pull sorry there's my i'm not gone i like the hidden pull idea uh or your integrated pull as well that fits more into a modern style but just standardly in a regular kitchen my own kitchen i like 96 mil is kind of my go-to uh in terms of brand uh you know i, I don't know there's so many out there i'm a fan of richelieu um but you know, there's lots out there for sure. Hope that helps a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, very cool. So that pretty much sums up the night, everybody. We had a great live stream. I'm going to sign off. This week, I am chatting about... Um, I am chatting about... What am I chatting about? Hold on, let me just go here for a second. Uh, this week on Saturday's video, we're talking about so soapstone countertops. So I get a lot of requests to talk about soapstone. So this week's video on Saturday is going to be talking about soapstone. So if you're interested in, you know, that countertop material, this will be a good one to check out and kind of put it into the, you know, column of other videos that have to do with countertops. Uh, it's very informative. Soapstone is a really super nice surface to work with. And you're going to hear all about it on Saturday. I'll leave it at that. Next week, we'll talk about Canadiandy and the design style that is essential to MTKD. You know it's not going to have an OTR. You know it's not going to have corner cabinets of any sort. And, uh, you know, I guess I'll have to scrap something together for Canadiandy. Remember, if you do want a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me, there's a link in the description below where we can chat together. It's over Zoom and the details are online. Oops. The details are online at www.mtkd.ca. Right here is that, but there's a link in the description below. And basically it's an hour call. Usually goes over an hour. It's no big deal. Um, where we can just brainstorm your ideas, look at your kitchen design, and just you know come up with a plan 
uh, for your kitchen, or you already have a design and you've been working with a designer, you want a second set of eyes, or you're looking at a space and you're not sure what you can do, that there's a lot of ways if you just get some uh, professional help. <laughs> you need professional help. So do I some days. Um, it really, really helps. From other people who've who've taken me up on this, it's really been valuable. So I'm, I'm not overselling myself. If you get a sense of what I'm like here in the live stream, it's very personal one-on-one -on -one touch to help you with your kitchen design. So that's there if you want it. I won't say any more about that, but I will say good night to you all. We'll see you next Wednesday. Have a super week. God bless. And uh, get ready for Canadian Andy. <laughs>